Hello and welcome to another Science Vision video. Now this video is all about the topic of photosynthesis. Okay. Now we've got two sorts of organisms. We're called autotrophs. Now autotrophs are organisms that can produce complex organic compounds from simple inorganic molecules. They are the producers in the food chain and they are what we call plants. Here's an example of a nice wonderful tree. Now the other sorts of organisms are called heterotrophs. Now heterotrophs are organisms that cannot produce their own food but acquire complex organic molecules by consuming plants or other animals. Here we've got a horse. Now a horse is an example of heterotroph. A horse will consume grass which is the producer. So energy flows from the plant to the horse. We are heterotrophs. Think about what you had for breakfast this morning. Okay, You are a consumer. You are a heterotroph. You're consuming both plant and sometimes animal products. Okay, Right. Here is our plant again. Let's think what the plant needs. The plant needs three things basically. Light from the sun, carbon dioxide from the air, and water from the soil. Now those are the three things a plant needs for photosynthesis. So what does it produce? Well, it produces glucose, and this is used for biomass, i.e. what we'll eat, and also energy. It also releases, thankfully for us, oxygen and this is just released into the atmosphere. And what are the energy changes? Well, light energy from the sun is converted in the plant to what we call chemical energy. And when you consume um, plant food, for example, in I don't know, fruit or vegetables, you're taking in the plant's chemical energy. Okay, So energy from, from the sun in the form of light energy is converted in the plant by photosynthesis to chemical energy. Let's look at the equation. This is the basic equation for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide plus water gives glucose plus oxygen. Now we need light for this process and the other thing that's essential for this process is obviously chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a green pigment that gives the plant its green appearance and this is found inside chloroplasts. Let's look now at the symbol equation for this. So, got to remember this one, well worth learning it now. 6 CO2 plus 6H2O gives C6H12O6 plus 6O2. Let's go back to it again. 6CO2, which is carbon dioxide, plus 6H2O, which is water, gives C6H12O6, which is glucose, plus 6O2, which is oxygen. Now, some of this glucose produced is used by the plant in its own respiration, and most of it will be converted into starch, and that's stored in stems roots and leaves that we may eventually consume. Now we need to look at a few of the classic photosynthesis experiments. The first one is this one you may have done yourselves. Here we've got a beaker with water. This is a filter funnel with a test tube resting on top of it. And here we've got a plant, often one we use is one called Canadian pondweed. And now as a light shines onto the pondweed, oxygen will be released from the cut end of the pondweed. You can see there bubbles of oxygen rising up. Now the variable we use here is the distance of the light source here, i.e. the intensity away from the pondweed. We can vary how far the light source is away from the pondweed and as we vary it we can measure how much gas is produced. We can count the number of bubbles of oxygen being produced. Okay, so a very very simple experiment there look at the rate of photosynthesis and how it's affected by light. Now another one we can do is testing leaves for starch. Now we use classically these sort of leaves. These are what are called variegated leaves. Now a variegated leaf has got white bits, remember these bits here, and green bits. In the green bits there is chlorophyll, in the white bits there is no chlorophyll. So I wonder where starch is produced. Well, the first thing we do is we take our leaf and we stop all the reactions by putting it in boiling water. It sounds rather cruel, we kill the leaf by putting it in boiling water. What we then do is extract the chlorophyll. Now the chlorophyll is extracted by using ethanol. Chlorophyll will dissolve in the ethanol. We can't heat ethanol directly because it's flammable, so instead we put it into a beaker of hot water. This water is just boiled at 100. Ethanol boils at 80, so as it boils what it does, it dissolves the chlorophyll, and what you'll find is the leaf starts to turn very pale. We then wash the leaf under running water, 
lay it onto a petri dish over a white tile and add some iodine solution. Now you may remember but um, iodine if starch is present iodine will turn blue or black. So can you think, now think about this leaf here, where do you think the starch will be found and where will turn blue black? Well what we find is this, a positive starch result where the chlorophyll was. Now where chlorophyll was there must have been starch. So chlorophyll is in the green parts so these parts of the plant here turn blue black. Now where there's no chlorophyll there'll be no starch so these parts will not react to the iodine so the iodine stays yellowy brown. So negative starch result in variegated or white part leaf where chlorophyll is absent. Okay. Now the third experiment is showing how plants require carbon dioxide. Now what we do, we put the plant, here's a geranium, inside a bell jar. So here's our bell jar here, here's our geranium plant. This is soda lime. Now soda lime absorbs carbon dioxide. Now leave the plant for a couple of days. Now what should happen then is the soda lime should absorb all the carbon dioxide in the jar. Now think about this. If all the CO2 in the jar is being absorbed, what can't happen in the plant leaves? Think about photosynthesis. That was a clue. Okay. So how can we show that photosynthesis is stopped? Well, if you test the leaves for starch, you should find out a couple of days the plant has not produced any more starch. In fact, it's used all up. So, using iodine test on your plant leaves, you should be able to show there's no starch present because no photosynthesis has occurred because there was no carbon dioxide. Okay, it's a very simple experiment to show that. Okay, so there we are. I hope you now understand a bit more now about photosynthesis. For more free science revision videos, just visit my site www.sciencerevisionvideo.com. Okay, thanks for watching.